never really been a voice um, uh, for the people that live and work in our business district, I'll say it that way. Um, and so I think that that's good. Um, so just briefly um, about my parking plan and about the city's uh, issues here is that, you know, I think that there is definitely a, a philosophical um, question to be raised and then I answered it one way and I think that some of you have different answers to that same question and it's who should pay for parking um, and who should pay for the infrastructure, the maintenance, uh, the liability, the lighting, uh, the repairs, the graffiti removal, who should pay for that? Um, and after many, many years of neglect in our parking lots and our parking infrastructure, um, you know, no one was because the city can only raise taxes so much before we tax people out of their homes, before we tax people out of their apartments, uh, before we tax the businesses out of town. And so they stopped raising taxes because of issues like parking and they only covered the core essential services, police, fire, Department of Public Works. Those were what were paid for first. Anything else was left over as extras. And if we got a little bit of work done, um, great, but if we didn't get that routine maintenance done, it's no big deal. And so after 20 years of that, you end up with lots that look like the ones up here um, and the Sea Deli lot in Midtown or the lot on Prince Street or the Dock Street lot or some of the lots that we have had in the city for 25 years and no finger was raised um, because there was no way to pay for it. And so what my philosophy was is that, you know, at some point we need to change the financing system of our on and off street parking lots and that it needs to be a user-based system. Um, people that live on 3rd Avenue in downtown Kingston, uh, a senior who doesn't drive anymore, I personally don't think should have to pay more in her taxes at her home because the uptown parking lot needs to be repaid when she may not even venture out of her house anymore. And so I think that this system does charge the user. There's no question about it. It's a user fee based system, um, which is a really hard change to make. To be able to go from a tax based system to a user fee based system <laughs> is really tough. And no one else has ever tried to do it because it's not the politically correct thing to do because you lose votes over it. People get upset at you about it. Um, but sometimes it's those hard choices that you just have to make. In 2017, we will continue to build a stronger tax base. After a competitive public process and interviewing extremely qualified applicants, I am pleased to announce that we will be working with a local architect, Andrew Wright of Wright Architects, to develop the old parking garage site in Uptown Kingston. got a fine day in Uptown Kingston. Um, I want to just thank uh, Don and Judy Tallerman um, for uh, opening up um, this beautiful space for us. Um, the Senate Garage has been um, such a great addition uh, to our Uptown community and uh, the number of events uh, that are held here and the number of people um, that are brought uh, to Uptown Kingston um, because of this uh, event space is, is truly remarkable and uh, either, of the, either of them will be happy to tell you about the dozens and dozens and dozens of weddings alone that they book each year. Um, just imagine um, the type of economic impact that's having um, with people coming, uh, many for the first time to Uptown Kingston. It, it is just truly remarkable. And so thank you both for your commitment um, and dedication to Kingston. I'm really excited um, to just uh, introduce you to a few of the people um, that I believe are going to play a critical role in the future here um, in Uptown Kingston. Those kinds of issues you must face if we're going to have a true renaissance and make sure that everyone can participate in it 
We need to hit tipping points. Um, that we're going to be having uh, a team uh, working together uh, to develop a project um, that we believe um, will uh, meet the needs of the community, uh, to be able to be a, a, a community-oriented development, one where um, we start the process like this, um, instead of handing you a project that's already completed, um, where we can go ahead and create um, a true community dialogue about what we all hope um, is, uh, as the county executive mentioned, a transformative project here in, in Uptown Kingston. We're here to build something that's gonna work, not just for us, but for, for all of Kingston and for really Ulster County as well. We need the community's buy-in. Uh, I think we have it on the parking um, because we all know that we need more parking in Uptown Kingston. Um, but we want to continue to have conversations um, both in large settings and small settings um, with individuals that know um, best what Kingston needs and, and that's the people that live and work here. And so we're excited that today we'll mark the beginning of that conversation. Um, we're going to then um, continue to work um, with that information and develop um, concepts and drawings that again we'll be sharing uh, with you and, and the rest of the community in the coming weeks. Um, but one piece that's also extremely important for us to recognize is that we can't do this alone. Um, and I'm very lucky again to have a partner in the county executive uh, to be able to work together uh, to be able to find the, the funding that we're going to need uh, to have this project come to fruition. Um, because a project of this size, building public parking, um, of this size and quantity um, is going to take everybody chipping in and, uh, and that, that includes New York State and so we're hopeful that New York State will be able to help provide us support um, for this project because I think without their support we may not be able to get it done and the same thing goes with the county and the city um, all playing an important role together um, to be able to, to put the pieces um, in place that we need. cool is this, right? I am pleased to inform you today that you are a first place winner. And Congratulations. I want that shirt though. <laughs> you know, and, and I've been told that for every minute that this speech goes on, I'm actually going to lose a million dollars. Do you have a young educated workforce? Because I need a young educated workforce. It is a new city with a new attitude and a new trajectory. It's a totally changed place. It can be done. You are doing it. Evidentiary note, young friend of mine, millennial, was in California, an artist, calls me up and moving back to New York. Where are you going? Kingston. I said, really? She said, yeah, I've been there. It's very cool. This, uh, this investment that the governor has made has really um, brought our community together. And while many of you participated in meeting after meeting after meeting, today is the payoff. Um, we were able to use the governor's model of listening to the ground level, listening to the grassroots, listening to what was important in our community. And by that, we built a plan and we built a pretty darn good plan. Thank you so much uh, for uh, taking the time to come out on this uh, rainy evening. Uh, and again, sorry for all the traffic, and if you had any problems parking, I promise we're gonna try to help solve that. Uh, <laughs> this evening. The target market for this building, empty nesters and young professionals, is the same type of target market we're looking for for the residential units of the King's Building Project. Business owners now move their businesses to where the talent is located. So whether they're highly educated, that's another way of saying talented workers. Uh, they want to live in cool places and they want to do cool things. And Uptown is already pretty cool. But I think if you have some more quality housing, 
and we have some more things for people to do. We'll attract even more people here, which will get more businesses going and improve uh, the businesses that are here now. And bringing uh, 250 or so more consumers that are gonna live right there, right at the end of the street, uh, will help the uptown businesses that exist now and will help hopefully fill some of these storefronts that they see they're still empty, that are being held back by whatever reason, whether it's parking or um, needing that extra nudge. And so my question is, I saw quickly on the slide about um, maintaining affordable housing uh, at market rate. So I was just wondering what market rate is for a lot of those, if there's a percentage that will be kind of set aside to make sure that folks that, um, I think the median, median rent right now in Ulster County is like just over $1,000. So sure. you were wondering how that compares, how you're gonna maintain affordability for folks. Sure, so uh, we, we're looking into this issue. Now, basically, when we say market rent, there's not an there's not what we would consider an affordable percentage of the building, but we hope to keep rents as low as we can and still make the project work. The, the problems that we're trying to solve with this project were number one, parking. Um, it wasn't affordable housing. So we have to take the rents from the, we have to take what's left over. So when you build an apartment, you get you receive rent. You have to pay the operating expenses, you have to pay the mortgage, you have to pay all the other costs. And what's left over goes to help pay for the parking garage. So in, for this project, the goal isn't to keep the rents as low as possible because we need to pay for the parking infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Negotiate the payment of the taxes, and if the latter, yep. what are the terms? So we still have to work out the terms. We will be working on a payment of the tax agreement, but I can't speak to the terms yet because we still have a lot to do with the uh, with the county, with the school district, and with the city. Uh, but in order to pay for this garage, uh, during the period of time that we're paying for the garage, uh, capital expenditure, there will be a payment in lieu of taxes. When the garage is paid for, we won't need a payment in lieu of taxes anymore. In other words, if this project didn't have the parking garage piece, then we would not need a payment in lieu of taxes. But because we're trying to pay for this parking garage, we have to come at it from a bunch of different angles, and one of them is the leftover rent, one of them is some of the grant money that we can use for the underground infrastructure, another is going to be the payment of the taxes, but I don't have the terms to talk about today. Having meetings like this with lots of different community members so we can understand their concerns. When Seeker goes horrible, is when you have someone coming, probably from out of town, who doesn't care and only wants to do what they want to do and they don't want to listen to anybody else, and they say, this is it, it's my way or the highway, and they hit a wall. What is the protocol for putting things on the agenda? That will be discussed later in the discussion of the reorganization of the committee under the auspices of the planning board. Agendas are supposed to be prepared through the department that is managing the commission. And that is what is going to be discussed later, what that protocol will be and how items get added and how they get posted to the website so you are in compliance with the open meetings law. So we'll the, until the this meeting point, you have does it. not address, does not discuss agenda and responsibility of setting the agenda. Furthermore, this was discussed at a public meeting in February. It's reflected in the meeting minutes. 
And it was requested specifically that those items be added to the agenda. I would request that you know the commissions uh, that that be honored for future agendas going forward. There comes a point in time in a city's life when you can take a look back at a specific event that changed the course of that city and put it on a path of revitalization. We saw it happen in Newburgh with the waterfront. We saw it happen in Hudson. Dia was the catalyst for Beacon's revitalization. And here in Uptown Kingston, the Kingstonian could be that catalyst for Kingston. A proposed $52 million mixed-use development project in the urban center of Uptown Kingston on the corner of Fair Street and North Front Street. The city of Kingston put out an RFQ and asked for uh, developers to bring economic development and parking to Uptown. And we are really excited to propose our project that is going to add, it's going to more than double the amount of parking that's available to Uptown Kingston uh, businesses and residents and visitors right now. We don't feel that our rents are that much above the market right now, although we do know that they're on the higher end for the amenities they're providing, for the quality of construction that we're doing. The realtors that we've talked to um, believe that these rents are appropriate. If approved, the Kingstonian project could be the ace that puts Kingston on the map of destinations for visitors near and far. It's, it's an important part of the process. The public needs to be able to we be heard. We need to feel included in, needs in to the feel process. Included, but we need supporters as well. Yeah. All too often, right. um, good projects get stopped because the... The naysayers. The naysayers right. um, come out in who are, force. Who are always right. a fractional minority. Right. Uh, but of, loud. A vocal minority. I would argue that some officials have occupied their desks for far too long to the detriment of our changing city. This commission is the backbone of Pittsburgh preservation in Kingston. This is why it is so incredibly, that, incredibly important that this citizen body maintain an independent voice in city government. You are not here to carry out the mayor's agenda, nor are you to be distracted with a <coughs> box in Uptown. Your legislative intent is to promote and protect Kingston's landmarks and historic districts and for the education, pleasure, and general welfare of our community today and tomorrow. Please keep your focus on that. Thank you for your service. It was an honor to serve with you. My name is Don Tollerman. I live at 104 Fair Street in Kingston. 
and I'm calling, I'm here um, to speak um, in favor of the zoning change. I think that this um, project should, um, should you have the support of everybody in Kingston who wants to see a bright and vibrant future? I think this is this is part of our economic renaissance. Affordable housing is absolutely critical and should be a part of every future development. But in this case, because of the de building of the garage and the maintaining of the garage, um, the the developer could not possibly be able to deliver a parking garage without having a pilot. So I don't think that affordable housing needs to be required for this project. I also happen to be on the DRI local planning committee where we learned about the project, especially um, the walkway and its relevance to the city. Um, when I joined the DRI committee, it seemed like that project had already been chosen, though many of us had questions about exactly how and why, and we didn't have a lot of light shed on what that process was. We did have a lot of questions about it. Um, I'm not sure our questions were fully absorbed, however, and I'm hearing through others' comments that similar questions are arising, so I wanted to agree with many of them and point some out. Um, one thing that was disappointing about being on the DRI was this um, process and the fact that we felt like our voices really weren't heard and our questions weren't taken seriously. We are not reserving any more spaces for units themselves. In other words, the 129 spaces that were going to be numbered will still become uh, 129 numbered. We foresee this building, as we've talked about before, as a model for sustainability because of its walkability. So we, we can see the need for people moving into this building to not have as many cars as they would if they lived somewhere else. Because you have direct access to almost everything you need between the grocery store, doctors, uh, pharmacy, eating establishments, uh, you have your recreational within the building and in uptown Kingston, bus service, bus service exactly. Uh, you can get anywhere you want to go in anything you need without getting in a car. So I think that uh, by design our residents are not going to need as many cars as they would if they lived in a different building um, in Kingston. And so while adding units could uh, use up some of that additional public parking. It won't be reserved and the way we see the parking turning over people that are coming here during the day will be presumably taking up the spaces from the residents that left during the day if they so choose to rent a, a, a space just like anybody else. And when that resident returns at night maybe that's a different spaces available and they go park there. Um, we can't we can't build enough parking for every resident to have every space they want, plus anyone in Kingston who shows up to have their own dedicated space as well. The parking spaces have to be turned over and used. The, the numbers with regard to parking and the, and the representations by the developer has been quite confusing. Um, so going back to the parking, it would be really wonderful um, yeah. to clarify very specifically what the requirements are for the proposed development Absolutely. on the parking garage so that we know exactly how many spaces are required under the code and how many spaces will then be left that could be considered to be used for municipal parking and um and, and, just and how much of a variance we're yeah and, and 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 that would determine if there's any variance required um with regard to parking. So those numbers, I would just love them to stop moving around and be hard and fast based yeah. on our code. Well, one of the reasons we, we made the comment in the past was in a public-private partnership, when you 
have this discussion, putting everything on the table in terms of what the public is being asked to participate in to fund your garage um, is something I think is, is something that we thought was worthwhile mm -hmm. relative to relative to the overall discussion of the project. Um, it seemed to cause some consternation, um, but the question to you is, is now that we know that there is, in, in point of fact, a pilot here because the deck deck mentions it, we still don't have any numbers. Um, it's odd probably for a mayor to be standing in front of you um, as part of a pilot application. If you deny the project, you keep, there's no way for us to move forward. That this, is a, this is a true but for. Without a pilot, this project is completely, we're stopped. There's no possible way forward. Um, and I will show you the numbers in a minute. Public benefits is 30900000 which shows a negative, meaning this project at the end of the day, after the 25 years, will cost us an additional $1.9 million. Above I and guess, beyond I guess the benefit. question is, Joe, why? Why? Why do it? If it yeah, why do it? If it's going to cost you that kind of money, why? Be Because the, this doesn't show you the revenue from the parts. So yeah. what we, that's what we talked about in the in the meeting that we had in the pre the pre screening, and that's the stuff that I think is a little bit more confidential. So you're proposing sure. 420 spaces, yes, of which 65 percent will be open to the public for use. Um, 277 out of 420. Correct. If we reserved one space per apartment, then that would leave the 277. Yes. And so I guess the question I have is because it's a we're, we're framing this as being a big parking issue in Kingston, which it is. And we had 300 spaces before this was demolished, the existing, the other prior parking spot. Do we know actually how many parking spaces are actually needed in Kingston right now, based on estimates to support business and future business in the city? I don't know a number. Yes, this is Alderwoman Hirsch. Um, I'm concerned about the guarantee of the 277 spaces. Um, I had, had asked what the actual um, uh, um, I'm sorry, the, um, the variance that was submitted to the ZBA, if that's been done yet, and if that's been approved, the variance on the parking spots. The variance on the parking spots has not been approved yet. And what is the actual number of the variance that you're asking for? I don't remember the parking variance count. Um, I don't. While I don't know the parking variance amount exactly, what I can say to speak to parking in general is that we operate a building very similar to this in the city of Poughkeepsie right now. It's called the Water Club. Um, we have 1.3 spaces per unit. And the unit mix there is very similar, mostly ones and two bedrooms with a few three bedrooms. We have extra parking with that 1.3 unit mix. And even though it's across the street from Vassar Hospital, it's not nearly in as walkable location as we see here at the Kingstonian. Um, we are providing 420 spaces as part of this project. So by reserving one dedicated space per unit, um, I think we're almost there, right at that number. Regarding uh, residents that may have a second car or may not have a car at all, but if they have a second car, there's options. They could lease a space just like anyone else uh, as part of the public for the monthly parking pass, or they could park across the street in the plaza parking lot and then come across the ADA uh, compliant bridge. <laughs>